Um, so your show is on um, every night at, I want to say, 10.50. It is 10.50, correct. Oh, get in. Yep. Yeah. Well, at, well done on that one. At the uh, Pleasance Dome. That's correct as well. Um, oh, you're up there uh, for, for a while. Have you seen any shows or is there any wanting to see? Um, I've seen one show and I've seen Rise of the Planet of the Apes today. Right. Which I'm, which I'm deciding as a show as well. <laughs> was, that, was that good? Yeah, I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. How many stars um, would you give it? I would give it uh, for, well, nudging four. Nudging four? Um, yeah, and I would, uh, and the, the actual real show I've seen was called Gentlemen of Leisure, um, Death of the Novel, which is on at the Underbelly in, I think it's 3.20 in the afternoon, and I, I couldn't advise it more, it was absolutely fantastic, I'd give that five stars, definitely, lots of funny bits, really, really, really good show. Good, good. Um, are there any shows that you would you would urge people to go and see? Only, only my own. I, I would never... I would never overly promote the competition. I mean, I'll promote the Gentleman of Leisure because I thought it was fantastic, but and it's also the only show I've seen. Uh, but I'd only promote my own, which is Peacock and Gamble and Mercy Broadcast, and that's at 10.50, Pleasant Stone. And also, we're doing our podcast as well. We do that live every Sunday. I was going to try and get you to plug that anyway. Yeah, but I'll plug it for you now. <laughs> that, that's at 8.20 also at the Pleasant Stone, but that's just on a Sunday that we do that. Um, you've been doing the podcast for years now, with both with uh, Ed and also with uh, Roger James when you did the yep. Ray Peacock podcast. Yeah. Um, tell people about that. Encourage people to go and download it in that. Um, well, I, 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 they don't have to. I mean, I, I'd encourage them to, if I'm honest. Have you, all right, okay. Well, I, I've, well, I've listened to it and I, I enjoy it, so I'm basically, I, I'll tell people to download it if you're not going to. I mean, I mean, we, we don't really mind if they do or not. I mean, we're, we're, we're very much winding down on it now. I think we've got three left now to do it. I think, I think that after the live ones, that's going to be us. So um, we're kind of... It, it'll be a, a legacy project rather than an ongoing project. Um, but I don't, I don't think the way people got podcasts even available anymore, as far as I know. Um, I haven't seen it's not, it. It's not meant to be, if it is. <laughs> um, yeah, we, we did that for... Uh, well, 50 episodes. We did 49 originally, and then we had an, an extra one uh, a couple of years later to make it 50. Um, that was fun uh, for a, for a while. And then myself and Ed, who were you know we were both in the Ray Peacock podcast, we came back with Peacock and Gamble podcast, um, which was just it's, it's basically a way of getting us together every, every week and making sure you know we, we carry on working. But I think I, I think we're coming to the conclusion now that we could probably it, we were talking about it last night, and I said it, it feels like putting the bins out. And, you know, it stops being a particularly creative project, and it now just becomes something that we just have to do every week. And uh, and, and we never wanted to get to that point with it at all. So, um, yeah, I, th I think we're going to do a, you know, we're going to get to the end of this live run. I think we've got one at Christmas, uh, a big live one at King's Place in London. And then uh, I think that'll be us with, with regards to the actual, with, with the podcast. But we're going to carry on working together. I mean, you're doing the, you're doing the emergency broadcast um, up at Edinburgh at the moment. You're also on tour with it, if I'm mistaken, yeah. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah we, we, we're on a sort of a, a sporadic tour, um, which is now stretching into the new year. There's a date to be added for the new year now as well. Um, so that's going around, uh, well, provincial towns and um, in the UK. Cool. Yeah. Um, so... Uh, what is next for you, that you then, when you're done? Um, the, the, the tour comes pretty much hot on the heels of the fringe. I, I have a I have a five day five days off uh, in the middle of September, and then and then we crack up with the tour. Um, I'm also I've just started writing a book, which I'm going to try and push a little bit. Um, and I, and myself and Tris Cottrell, who directed Warm Up, are also discussing different ideas. Um, to, to make something in a similar vein, I think, again. So, yeah, there's quite, quite a few things going on at the moment. Sweet. Um, now, a bit of a question, kind of, you know, writing-wise. When you yep. write, kind of, the emergency broadcast, and if you write stuff for y yourself and Ed, yep. do you kind of look at it as your relationship, or do you try and look outside it? Um, Namely for the fact that I tried writing something for a, a friend of mine, and it's quite hard to write your own relationship down on paper. Oh yeah, totally, yeah, totally is. But uh, but I'll tell you what the, what maybe the trick is. Certainly, as far as we're concerned, is to um, is, is to kind of kind of pervert your 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 personalities uh, in in real life. So myself and Ed will act with each other in real life, um, how we do within the podcast or how we do within the emergency broadcast. Um, but they but they are personas. So you kind of get used to playing those personas. 
rather than, rather than just going, what are we like in real life, let's write that down, because I, I think that will always be kind of dull, I, I think, you know, because it's just normal life, and I think if you can find uh, a, a persona that you can write towards that persona, rather not a character, but just, just a persona, then I think that's maybe the trick, and that's certainly how we wrote Emergency Broadcast. I mean, the writing of Emergency Broadcast, despite it being quite, well, a very stupid show and looking very, very loosely put together, uh, was, was very, um, we, we spent a long time writing it and we, uh, we we wrote ten hours of material which we performed um, over four months at King's Place in London. Uh, we were doing two hour shows and, um, and we, we did all those and then we, we dropped, uh, we, we dropped bits and bobs very, very slowly until we got down to an hour. And then we re- then we rewrote that hour, um, so it's kind of it's kind of a complicated pro- process for something that's you know if you saw it it's so ridiculous it's so right. stupid it looks like we've wrote it in an afternoon but, we, <laughs> but, but it's, it's, yeah it's took quite a long time to get to where it's at now and and it's also constantly evolving now we are changing things on an almost daily basis right so it's not completely finished then um, yeah, well I don't think it'll ever be completely finished because it's it's. I certainly am refusing to learn it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Well, the thing is, if you're performing your own show, then realistically, if you improvise on stage, it's a rewrite, isn't it? It is a rewrite, yeah. And, uh, but also, I mean, it can backfire as well. I'm sort of, I'm laid up a little bit today because I, uh, last night I quote-unquote improvised a bit where I put a chair on my head. Right. I put my arms through the, uh, the bars at the bottom of the legs of the chair. I was stumping around the stage and I fell on a mic lead and, I, and then I tripped over the mic stand and I fell over and couldn't stop my fall because my hands were locked in the chair. Um, I believe it's known as a Davro in the business. <laughs> okay. And, um, and, and I, yeah, I, and I actually went flying and I cut my leg really badly and, and I'm pretty sure I've torn a muscle at the back of my leg. So, uh, you know, it, it can very much backfire. <laughs> so, so you're just injured. Well, yeah, yeah, I got into in one of the previews as well, where I was I was climbing a rope ladder. It was a pretend rope ladder that we made, which is just um, like bamboo sticks all taped together. And I decided in the show that I would just try and climb it without attaching it to anything so, to make them snap. And it was very funny, but one of them snapped and sliced my arm. And uh, and I've still got, I'm looking at it right now, I've still got quite a big scar across my arm. Um, so, yeah, I'm getting battered in this show. Well, people have to suffer for their art, really, don't they? Yeah, but, but it's all because of me. It's my own <laughs> fault. I mean, they say about Cleese and, and uh, Andrew Sachs that, you know, that he would actually hit him really hard in Faulty Towers. And when Andrew Sachs complained about that, John Cleese was saying, it's just one time. You know, it'll, it'll be there forever, it'll be brilliant. But that was someone else hitting him. I'm sort of hitting myself. And then just going, that really hurts. Yeah. I'll do it if again. It, if this is funny, I've got to do it again yeah. tomorrow night. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, I'm, I'm pretty battered and bruised at the moment, not just on an emotional level. Nice. 